Yes, uh, welcome Prashant. Welcome to your video mock channel. And you have an interview in CPCP, right? Yes, yes. Okay, today you want to snap for environmental engineering. Yes. So Prashant, uh, tell me that uh, what is the difference between uh, these uh, two parameters that first we have a pressure filter and second we have uh, this uh, gravity filter. Uh, sir, so, um... Pressure filter and gravity filter both are the uh, water purification method of purification. Uh, in a gravity filter, we simply allowed the water to um, impure water to trickle down from the uh, from the higher head to lower head uh, with by the action of gravity, and it is used for water treatment of uh, water. On the other hand, we use uh, uh, pressure filter where we apply external pressure to move our water from uh, from through filter and it is basically used in swimming pool for the purification of swimming pool water oh. and tell me some uh, about the biological treatment for the wastewater treatment biological treatment yes. so uh, sir in uh, biological treatment basically we follow a process which is called a uh, bioflocculation uh, in which our uh, the uh, wastewater which has a high amount of organic material uh, pass through a um, filter which is which has some microorganism or we can say that is uh, mlss and, and these uh, microorganism for the, uh, the organic material for these microorganisms act as food so basically these um, uh, microorganisms act on that uh, organic uh, uh, act on that organic material and stabilize the waste. Uh, we use two uh, methods uh, in this biofocalization process. One is trickling filter and other is um, uh, other is uh, aero aerobic uh, one is trickling filter and other is uh, aerobic sus uh, aeration tank method uh, added to the filter. Okay. Uh, just tell me the two mechanism in this process. Uh, so, yes, yes, aerobic attached growth and aerobic suspension culture are two mechanisms associated with bioflocculation. Right. Now, can you uh, this uh, see the screen? Yes, sir. Yes, this is Okay. Suppose that this you have a graph. And, uh, this is uh, some industry uh, which is treating some water, and uh, here uh, water is entering. And the pH is in starting that is uh, you can say like six at t equal to zero, but okay. after uh, some times that you can take like twenty four hours. After twenty four hours, the pH of this water changes and that or you can say the treatment during the treatment process that takes a twenty four hours times. Now the pH of this water comes out. Uh, let us suppose that is a uh, you can say that nine. Okay. And assuming that there is a linear variation in H positive ions, H positive ions that varies linearly. Okay, sir. Okay. Yes. Now tell me the pH, mean pH value. What is the mean pH value for this? The mean, mean pH value would be uh, first we have to convert the pH into the uh, H negative H plus concentration, which will be a negative log of. 10 raised to power minus 6 plus 10 raised to power minus 9 divided by 2. That would be mean pH. 10 raised to power minus 6 plus 10 raised to power minus 9 by 2. 2. Minus log overall of this whole uh, total. Yeah, yeah, I put it. Okay. Okay, suppose that there is a as positive ions varies parabolic. Yes, sir. So what is the mean pH in this? And assuming this parabolic variation, this graph. Okay, sir. Uh, there's a time 24, and here the value comes out to be as positive as that will be 10 raised to minus 9. Yes, sir. Here t equal to 0, the value is 10 raised to minus 6. Yes, sir. Um, so, in that case, I have to find it using area under the curve. Uh, we need to find it. Uh, we have to first find the area of this curve whole okay. and then we will assume a value suppose a, a, an unknown value x and then we have to find its area so by equating these two area we will find the mean value in that term okay just tell me the h positive mean value 
What did the H positive mean here? Um, so uh, I can solve it when I have the values. Like I, yeah, I have given you the values. Huh? This ten raised to the minus six at t equal to zero and ten raised to the minus nine at t equal to twenty four. Uh, I have a long method in my mind. I was basically using it to in, means we have to find the uh, the equation of this curve which you have given me, and I will find the area under this curve. Then I will assume a, a constant value which you are calling mean, and I will find in the area under that curve that uh, will be the x suppose x into twenty four and is equal to area under this curve which equation is this ten minus six ten minus nine. Then from there I can find the value of x which will be the h mean. I do not have, I can't recall the exact formula for that, but I am aware of the mathematical approach to solve that problem. Okay. But I am aware there is some formula for that part to like parable, how to find the mean of a parabolic curve. But I would approach it in, in, in the traditional mathematical way. Tell me the some formulas or some methods to calculate the peak discharge in river or in any catchment area you want to find the peak value. Peak ah, yes, sir, catchment area. Sir, uh, there is a uh, Dickens formula C com C D A raised to power 3 by 4. Then uh, there is a, a Rives formula C D A raised to power 2 by 3. And then there is a English formula which I don't remember the formula, but it has a big uh, uh, empirical equation. So that will be used to find the peak value for a particular. Any case. other method instead of these empirical the rational formula is also there. Rational formula. I effective into area of catchment. I effective into area of catchment. And any other method like hydrograph, their method is or no? Hydrograph. Hydro, uh, we can calculate Q peak from hydrograph also by simple calculation of hydrograph. So one more method where we study the flood frequency analysis. I can't recall some more methods than this. Um. Okay. So uh, just uh, okay, we say that uh, unit hydrograph. We you know what is this unit hydrograph? Now I want to know the significance of this unit hydrograph. What is the significance? Why we use this unit hydrograph? Yes, sir. so unit hydrograph uh, is a very important. Uh, you can say a, um, a theoretical tool. Uh, which is used in the prediction of floods uh, in hydrology. So, because from UVA, with the unit hydrograph, we can calculate the uh, peak uh, discharge of uh, uh, any duration of rainfall. So, using various um, properties of a hydrograph. So, that's why we use unit hydrograph is basically the response of the catchment to particular rainfall. So, if we have that data, then we can calculate or it basically give us um, a mathematical model to uh, predict the uh, um, discharge in uh, if there are other uh, duration or other intensity of rainfall is present. In. Right. Okay, Prashant, just as, uh, uh, have you prepared some uh, topic like structure, like strength of material? Yes, sir. Suppose that we have this material. Yeah. This is any stress element and we have drawn some planes here. And uh, here I'm assuming that some stresses are acting on these planes. Okay, like... It can you can take this values like like hundred MP. 
these are the stresses yes 100 yes sir and uh, this is a plane and on that plane i want to calculate the shear stresses that plane is making an angle of 30 degree there yes sir i want to know the shear stress in this plane in the line plane yes sir yes, please tell me the shear stresses uh so, um can I calculate here? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Take this forty five degree. Just change this angle, take the forty five degree, right? Okay, okay, sir. If it's 45 degree, then the shear stress will be uh, 50 MPa. 50 MPa? Yes, sir. Will it be positive or negative? Uh, uh, so, on which plane actually? This plane? Yeah, uh, only plane. Okay. It will be positive, sir. So you said that 50 MPA positive. Yes, sir. So, but it is negative. Okay. okay, Prashant, uh, just uh, uh, let me give you feedback. Okay, sir. You know concept very well, no doubt in this case. Yes, you sir. have prepared, well prepared your concepts yes, this sir. parabolically variation let me tell you this uh, you will you are going to find the area of this curve okay yes sir yes sir you can find the area very easily just assuming that there is a rectangle right yes sir yes sir just assuming that there is a value of t just i'm yes. saying there is a value of t that you have a 24 minus 0 24 just i'm assuming yes sir. just assuming this value is this total value is b and this value is a and this is the area of parabola that you can see 2, two by three. 3. It's a T, it's a B minus A, 2 by 3, B minus A into T. Okay. Just completely rectangle B into T minus divide 2 by 3, B minus A into T, just divided by T. Then you yes. can find this yes. Yes. B minus 2 by 3 of B minus A. Yes. So actually, I was aware of, aware of the method, but I didn't visualize this upper two third part i was kind of thinking that i will find the equation of this curve and from there i can like integration and find the area that is the same method but it's lengthy of course this is the shortcut to do this next i ask do some unit hydrograph signals you have told me very well yes sir. one more method to find the peak discharge there is a flood frequency analysis okay flood frequency analysis. Flood frequency analysis. here we use the hazens uh Weber's formula hazens formula yes sir. california's method Binomial distribution we used and the peak values. Okay. And this uh, peak, uh, this uh, shear stress on this plane, you will get the minus fifty because it's a compressive. Okay, sir. So I got confused. Actually, I was using Mohr circle. I was. I am not. I don't find the formula very easy. So I was using from there. I think I got. What the center of this Mohr circle? Fifty zero, minus fifty zero. Minus fifty zero. Yes, sir. So, but the it is a center. But the radius of the Mohr circle, fifty, fifty MP, fifty. So center is here, and the yes. radius is fifty. So you are doing like this. Yes, sir. You are doing like this, okay? Yes, and sir. And you are making a plane here. This forty-five degree from this plane. Yes, sir. So first you have to define this plane. Then you will get this this answer. This is at ninety oh. degree. Okay, okay. Actually, I yeah, so I was confused with on sign convention. I will look into it. Okay, no problem. Okay, Prashant, uh, now you can leave now. Anything you want to know? Um, no, so is everything fine with my answer giving technique, or should I like be a bit I means am I not exaggerating or making it a bit large answer? I mean, if the answer giving technique is fine or not. Yeah, your answers are very well. No, that I, if I if I have to rate you out of ten, I'll give you 
I'll give you nine marks out of ten. Okay. Your answer is very well. You explain very well. And keep learning like in this way. Okay, sir. Okay. That's okay. all. Okay. Thank you.